heading into a city for another day of service calls. Uh, TXV replacement and a system check. Uh, this is a view from the Thomas Roads Bridge of Wilmington, North Carolina. Very pretty. Very nice at night. We're heading over the end of Witherspoon to uh, pick up TXV. They sell all American Standard and train parts, uh, along with DNL parts. They also sell those. So we're going to pick that up along with a check valve and a dryer. We'll go ahead and install that and uh, we'll be good to go there hopefully and then uh, repair a leak on a reversing valve where, I don't know, a little kid soldered it in is what it looks like. So I'll show you that and we'll see uh, all sorts of good stuff. Stay tuned. Alright, the trusty microvac is starting to start the recovery process here on the first of our jobs for today. Got about 90 pounds. We have a nice train, XL 1400 Super Efficiency Weathertron. You can tell by the nice black hat it's wearing. It's from 2000. 14 seater, so a very nice unit for that time. It's got a bad TXV on the inside. Look at the reversing valve change out. It's not the right valve. You can see where they crimped it off to sort of work on it. And look at that. I don't know about that, but I think my my kids could probably fix it better than us. But it's nasty. Doing it on top looks better because it's easy to reach. So I gotta try to re-weld this. We have a leak right over here. It's gonna be a mess. We'll see. Alright, here's our TXV that's bad. We gotta change it out. Braze in, so we'll probably have to sweat it out. Not really enough room to go chopping up pipes and splicing things together in here. Check valve right here. You can go ahead and replace it since it's an integral part of that system. We'll just have a new one. Brazed in TXV equalizing tube. Let's see if we can't sweat that out too. Because it's kind of a pain in the butt to try to put them together. You're always concerned about the tube collapsing or something like that. And then we defeated the purpose of making the repair. Alright, this is the check valve that we're putting in. Uh, purpose of a check valve is to prevent flow of refrigerant from one direction and to allow it from the opposite direction. Uh, reason being, in heating mode, this TXV is not needed. It's only used to meter refrigerant in cooling mode into the evaporator. So in heating mode, this check valve will allow it to bypass that uh, <coughs> TXV and head back to the outdoor unit uh, because the outdoor unit has become the evaporator in heating mode. And uh, since we're doing a TXV, these are so inexpensive that little screen in there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and replace it since we're right here and it takes about two extra minutes. Alright, we got our check valve assembly fitted up. Got it mated back with the pipe. Now we're about to braise it up. Alright, that's our equalizing tube placed in there. I sweated the other one out. Everything's placed in there. I figure we'll go ahead and get the whole shebang put in place and we are ready to braise. Alright, most of our joints are braised. I got the TXV here, the outlet, and uh, it's not brazed in yet. I laid the cool gel to that TXV to keep it safe there while we're brazing it in. Should only take a few seconds, but I don't like to risk anything. Got our access points here so I can test this coil because I'm not about to put it back together, put the air handler back together if the damn coil is leaking. That would really tick me off. So I'm about to braze this up and then we'll test it out. Well, the TXV is being a little bit hard to braze in because I have to. Uh, get it underneath it and because of all the copper pipes run around it's difficult to get there uh, so I'm going to break out the devil horns here to take it uh, take it down so we're going to see how they work I think we'll be good to go after this rock and roll baby rock and roll well I had a leak on the uh, bottom of the TXV fitting that I braced in real hard to see uh, I worked through that one got out the devil horns you saw that and took care of that and that did the trick there was another leak in there and it was really bothering me and it was actually right where, I don't know if you can see it, get back there, the TXV and the check valve tube meet right there before uh, capillary tubes. Uh, it was actually had a factory leak, believe it or not, so we kind of did some good here even though we didn't intend to. Had to repair that leak and now we have 225 pounds of pressure, old school gauges up here. Let's see if it holds. All right, we got the reversing valve wrapped up here, wet rags. Uh, this is the area the leak was at. Of course, it's a very difficult area to braise. Uh, so we're going to try to get in there, seal it up, and then pressure check it. 
I have pressure on the system. It's fallen a little bit since I started uh, after I made my repairs here. So, not very fast at all. I don't hear anything, but I do see any bubbles down. It's very hard if it focuses. Let's see here. Come on, focus. Around the rim of this valve, bubbles are appearing. Lots of small bubbles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack this with nylog to uh, counteract this little leak here. Then I'm going to go give myself something to eat, and hopefully the pressure will not have changed at all. Alright, we are putting the vacuum on the system. Old, dirty system. See how low can she go. Right now we're at 1,500 and falling down. So, let's see if we can get her back in action. Alright, this is an example of what I want to discuss as far as TXVs. This is our new TXV. We're not done charging. Obviously, you see the uh, subcooling is still a little low. Uh, we're going to look for a target 8 to 10 subcooling. Superheat 6.5. Uh, TXVs are designed to keep the superheat at a certain level, and that way it modulates the capacity of the unit to match what you need for that particular situation. Uh, if it's 95 degrees inside and we just put this unit online, the superheat was going to be sky high. Uh, just because that hot air going across that refrigerant evaporator is going to evaporate all that refrigerant out and starve the evaporator real fast for a piston style system. This one right here would then in turn, the TXV would then in turn flood the evaporator with more refrigerant. That's why our pressure is so high even though it's only about 70 some degrees outside. It floods the evaporator causing the superheat to drop to hold a steady level. Uh, typically what I've seen is 8 to 10 degrees superheat. Which is about where we're at. Subcooling's too low, we gotta add another pound of refrigerant probably, but it tells me that the TXV that we put in is doing its job now, and that's what I like to see. A little bit of sweat. Our old TXV was about 26 degrees of superheat and rising and with the proper charge. The subcooling was up near 20, so that tells us it was a little overcharged as far as subcooling, but the superheat wasn't being held down by the TXV. That's why it's always important to check superheat even though you got a TXV system, just to confirm the TXV is working.